as we are knock, um, I just look at your video there. Uh, I'm actually going on vacation and I would have liked a little bit more time to think about this. But I'm going tomorrow, I'll be away for a week, and I thought I'd better do this before I go. Right, um, I just want to respond to your, to your video about uh, meaning, text and context and certism. Because I think you're kind of shooting off in the wrong direction there. Let me explain what I mean. Uh, you uh, you dismissed the, the, the comments made by certain people that people can make their own meaning. But funnily enough, in your dismissal, you, you seem to be missing the point of what they're saying. You basically got to the point where you're assuming that there should be a universal meaning, um, one absolute meaning for something. You then analyze the situation, find that you can't derive a universal or a absolute meaning for it, and you then conclude that there's no meaning at all. But in the meantime, you've missed the point of what people are saying, that you can make your own meaning. And I'm using your own example here, the one that uh, is about your the bumper sticker, uh, no Jesus, no peace. And the, the argument you brought up against that was that you couldn't, you, kn you couldn't know the man who put that sticker onto his car, so you could have no idea what he meant by it. But that is not relevant to what people have said to you, because people said people make their own meaning. So presented with a sticker that says anything, I don't need to care what the person putting that sticker up meant by it. I can decide what I mean by it by looking at it. So I can decide what I read into what's on that sticker. So that was my first observation. But as it's not really the most important one, the, the one that I wanted to actually focus in on was based on your comments about text and context. And it comes back to the meaning one, the meaning issue as well, but via a bit of a detour. Now, let's look at what you are saying. You're, you're basically coming up with an argument that sounds very familiar to me. You know, if I don't listen to the actual subject matter, but the, the form that your argument takes. It sounds quite a lot to me like any argument that purports to show a problem with infinite regression. Because basically what you're saying is you're saying you can only derive meaning if you know the context, but then you can only derive the fuller meaning if you do if you have a fuller context for that meaning and so on and so forth. So basically basically you're presenting reality as an onion with layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of meaning. But every time you add an extra layer of meaning, you are the outside of the onion and you can put another layer around it. And I have a problem with that. And I'll tell you why. It is I think a simplistic way of looking at reality and it's caused by the fact that you're using uh, simple straightforward examples and they then don't lend themselves to any sort of complexity and as a result you reach this conclusion. But if we look at other examples of human endeavor and knowledge we can find examples where this isn't the case. So what I'm going to illustrate to you now is not a direct answer to your question. It is just, just an answer to the form that your argument takes and how in other realms of knowledge there can be a different answer to it. And all I am suggesting is that within the realm of meaning and it, within the realm of text and context, there might be a similar solution. I'm not saying that there is, maybe there isn't, but we can't dismiss it out of hand looking at the examples that I'm going to give you, even though they are completely unrelated with the actual subject matter that you brought. So, 
Let's look at two examples that I'm going to bring up.